Chairman Senator Gomes, Ranking Member Representative Buccino, and distinguished members of the committee. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity this morning to talk to you about House Bill 5376, an act concerning the reevaluation of amount of medical and prescription drug copays paid by state employees. Structural changes are essential. They're critical for us so that we head our state and move in the right direction. And a good first step in making these structural changes so we in Connecticut move in the right direction is to evaluate the compensation that happens in the private sector and what happens in the public sector. At first glance, if you look at the pay scales, it is my understanding that the pay scales between employees doing similar jobs, whether it be in the private sector or in the public sector, are very comparable, which is great since we just heard a few minutes ago about wage parity. But when you look at the total compensation that is, goes into the final analysis, when we look at the medical benefits, when we look at the pension contributions, which then becomes the total package, it is my understanding that there is a wide disparity between a public sector employee and that similar job in the private sector. And estimates have ranged anywhere from 25 to 45 percent in terms of compensation when you combine the entire total package between wages, pension, and the medical benefits. So what I'm requesting this morning is for this esteemed committee to look at what structural changes do we need to make? What first step could we take so that we head our state in the right direction? And with that, if you can look at as simple as the co-pays that we as state employees, all of us pay, you, me, and all of us in this room who qualify for state medical uh, um, insurance. What is it the co-pays that we pay? And compare that with what is paid in the private sector. So that is my ask of you today, to look into the parity as far as co-pays are concerned. It is my understanding that even if we increase the copay, but as minimum as $5, if our copay is increased by $5 for each and every one of us, the result would probably be in the range of $7.8 to $8 million as far as the state is concerned. So a $5 copay increase, we now, most of us pay $5 on our copay. So even if we increase it only by five and make it 10, the difference could be as astronomical as $7.8 million on an annual basis. I urge you to consider this proposition and I will continue to make myself available for any questions that you have. Thank you for this opportunity, for giving me this morning to be in front of this committee. Thank you. Any, any questions, Mr. Pochino? Representative Puccino. Thanks. Uh, Representative Shinovasan, thank you so much for attending today and for your testimony. Um, just curious, <clears throat> on at what do you do you see as the average uh, copay um, right now for uh, the standard? What would the standard be right now? Do you feel in your profession, your line of business? What could you what could you say the average copay would be for the normal uh, insured individual? The most common one that we see is $25. I mean, the range you know, can be as high as 50, as you know, mm -hmm. but when you're asking for the most common one, we definitely don't see any fives at all. Rarely do we see a 10. By and large, the average is about 25. Thank you, because that clears things up a little bit for the bigger picture of what we're looking at here and a little bit of sacrifice. Uh, really does go a long way, as you said. So I appreciate you coming out today and testifying, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Pacino. Representative Smith. 
Representative, good to see you. Uh, thanks for coming before our committee. It's always good to have friendly faces here. Um, I like your idea a lot. I think it makes uh, you know common sense. We have to look at different ways for the state to be able to save money and uh, contribution to our co-pays would be one way of doing that. It all adds up. I'm just wondering though if, if uh, can, we have the ability to do it. So if we were to pass this bill and it became law, are we then still bound by um, the, the contracts that may be in place between the various unions, or would this supersede it, if you know? Reverend Smith, thank you for that question, but I didn't hear the, the final end of that. Maybe you cut off on the microphone. If you could just repeat that for me, thank you. So my question to you is, if there are union contracts in place already that govern how much a particular public employee might receive, in terms of co-pays or have to pay as far as co-pays, would the union contract supersede the legislation if this were to become law? I'm not sure. I'm just wondering if you know. Thank you, Reverend Smith. I, too, do not know the, the answer for that, but I do know that this is one of the subject matters that when it comes to arbitration, when it comes to a dialogue with the unions, we need to bring up so that, as you know, these contracts come up for renewal on a constant, consistent basis, and this should definitely be at the table. You know, promises made, we cannot renege them. We all firmly believe in that, but moving forward, can this be a subject at the table that we can negotiate as these contracts get negotiated and look at not at wages alone, but look at the total benefit package? It is my humble feeling that it can be done and it should be done. I tend to agree with you, and hopefully one day we'll be able to be in a position where we can actually negotiate these and vote on these contracts, but um, that's for another day. We, we do appreciate you coming here today and testifying. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Reverend Smith. Mr. Paleo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, Representative. Thank you for your testimony today. So you mentioned $50 co-pays possibly as the high end. Can you just talk about what surrounding states uh, have in the region for both co-pays and some of the benefits that you're discussing this morning? Thank you, Representative Pagino, for asking me that question. Yes, I have done, you know, I've looked into the surrounding states, and they are pretty much in the average, not the 50 that we talked about, which is on the high end. And by and large, they are all in the $25. Okay, can you give some specific examples of surrounding states and, and what their benefit structures look like? Thank you for that question, but I just want to make sure we're looking at the surrounding states in terms of are the, are the, uh, at, at the private level or at the public level. I mean, I'm not sure which way your question is directed to. Uh, for the reevaluation that you're specifically calling for, for state workers, municipal workers. Right. Thank you, Representative. As I said, the, in, in, in my evaluation of surrounding states, they're all in the range as far as copays are concerned, which is what I'm addressing here in this bill, not the entire, and not looking at all of the medical benefits, which would be a next step, which is the, which is the next bill that I would have in mind to make sure that also is, is on par with what it is available in the, in the private sector. They are in, in, are in the range of $25. So you mentioned reevaluation. So who would be responsible or who would be performing the reevaluation? The, as, the as, as I see that, when when the the benefit package is outlined, as we do in a, on an annual basis, what what is it that we sign up for? What are the benefits that we sign up for? There, at that particular point, the agency there would then say that your copays moving forward would no longer be X, but it would be Y. That's the way I see that the, it, I mean, the structure doesn't change. The structure remains the same. The, post, the people doing their due diligence of informing us as you're well aware of, you know, we get notices as state employees, we get notices saying at the end of each year that 
you have not done certain things and so your insurance rate is going to go up. I mean, you've not had your physical, you've not had your colonoscopy, you've not had your eye exam, and these are the reasons that your, cope, your premiums moving forward are not going to be what they were last year, but they're now going to be increased by $100 or the other. And I have been in that position, scrambling the last minute at the end of the year to make sure I meet those deadlines and get my eye exam and so on and so forth. So I would, I would see that it would be no different. We're not asking for another, some other uh, oversight or somebody else to come in and oversee what the co-pays would be. It would be just the restructuring and saying, instead of your co-pay being five, your co-pay will be, let's say, if you decide, the committee decides moving forward, 10 is an appropriate number, or go with the industry standard of 25, whatever you decide, that I see that coming out of the same group of people that oversee our medical benefits. Any more people? Anybody else? Thank you for your testimony. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity this morning.